Hey everybody, maybe you've been using iMovie for years and you've amassed a large movie collection. You finally made the switch to Final Cut Pro and what you'd like to do is move your entire iMovie collection, your library over to Final Cut Pro, make this transition. However, you're looking online and you're searching as you can find a good way to do this to send your iMovie library over to Final Cut Pro. You're searching, you're seeing stuff from Apple that, that's coming immediately up for this these instructions and you want to follow along and do this and i'm going to tell you that you're going to be disappointed if you're going to follow these instructions i'm going to show you why and then i'm going to show you the right way to do it the way that i believe people want to do it the way i did it to move everything over in bulk correctly so let's get started i'm going to cite an example here i've created a test library where i've moved over just five of my videos i have like a hundred or more in a single library but I think five is sufficient to bring the point across and if I follow the instructions they talk about opening up one of the videos in question and then selecting it and then choosing file send movie to Final Cut Pro and I'm going to show you why number one this would be very tedious to do uh, in a, as a singular event and number two why it doesn't work so I'm gonna open up flip clock works very fast on the M1 and we'll see that the movie just runs fine in iMovie. So the movie's running fine. And we say, okay, this is the one that I want to move over. So we're going to go to File. And we're going to send movie to Final Cut Pro. And that would seem like the obvious choice. And I hit that button. And we could see that it automatically opens up Final Cut Pro as it does this transition. We can see the importation begins of this one movie, mind you. So we can already see that there's a fault in this process having to do this a hundred times or more if you have a large library. But we're going to go through this once. And Final Cut opens... And we can see my, my main libraries in here, tons of different projects, but we're going to focus on the test one I made. And if I open up, sure enough, we can see Flip Clock is one that I imported. And I'm going to open up Flip Clock. And on the bottom, we do see that video. We can run it right now. Imported it is. However, as far as the original footage, what happened is, we only have this one video right here, this 13 minute, 48 second video. There's no original footage, original content that was pulled across. It's not the import you think it did, not as you would compare it to what we would expect to see in iMovie, which is all of our original footage like this. So let's talk about the right way to do this. I'm gonna go and delete that import Remove that test iMovie library that I created. Now we're going to do it properly. I'm going to show you how. So I'm going to open up any video in the library. Doesn't matter. I'll open up Flip Clock again. Really doesn't matter. With that video opened, now I'm going to go to that library here. The name of this library highlighted on the left hand side. We can see it, right? with it highlighted now go up to file and send the entire movie library to final cut pro this is not mentioned in the instruction this is an entirely different process that'll move the entire library so i'm going to click that and we're going to see now each individual file the xml and everything will be imported this is not going to take long again that's why i only created a small test one with five videos but we're gonna watch a process through from beginning to end so we could review the final result when it finishes and we can watch the importation as it goes through. Now we're not importing projects, we're importing entire libraries. 
it's completed. We'll review our test iMovie library now, opening it up, and we see all of them are imported. And also very important, if I click on one, going back to flip clock again, we see all of the original video content is stored. This is the audio, the video, the images, everything is there. Unedited video clips that were taken during the creation of the video. Original audio. Screenshot, pictures that were taken in support of the video. We tried a different project. And of course, double clicking the project itself, we could open it on the bottom as well. So now, of course, you'll have to go and learn how to use Final Cut Pro, but at least you know now how to import perfectly your original iMovie library collection into Final Cut Pro. There's one last item I'd like to point out, especially if you're migrating to new hardware. I think you'll save a lot of money doing this as I have. If you have a Mac Mini and there's an old hard drive in there and it's considerably large, consider purchasing one of these devices as I have on Amazon. They're not a lot of money. With this, I was able to take that old drive and connect it using USB 3.1. Obviously very fast, so there's no lag. What I did was, after it was converted, I was then able to use that drive as my working library for Final Cut Pro, thereby not needing to use the actual hard drive stored on the computer. This also makes it portable if you have a laptop where you want to take your work on the road and hook it up to a Mac with Final Cut. Also, you wouldn't have the requirement of paying a premium to preload your computer with the largest hard drive when you purchase it from Apple. So I just wanted to share that. I hope you found this video helpful and useful as you migrate to Final Cut Pro. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Would you like to reply? <laughs>